Hello everybody and welcome at the Sheldrake's Wildlife Trust. It is at uh, 11 a.m. in the morning here in Kenya. Uh, we shall be bringing you a live feed for the baby elephants here in the nursery. We've got uh, 12 baby elephants and it is a chilly morning today and uh, we expect the elephants to come in running for the milk. Uh, we don't expect them to go into the mud uh, because of how chilly it is. But uh, we are happy to note that all the elephants are good in the nursery at the moment. They're strong and healthy. The Sheldrick's wild action that is taking care of often baby elephants and rhinos and later on uh, reintroducing them back into the world. And that's why all the babies that you're going to see here now are orphans. And all have been rescued from different parts of the country having different reasons for being orphans. Some of them. We know exactly what has caused them to be left orphans. For example, the mothers have been killed by poachers due to trade in ivory. Some have been separated from their families by human beings, what we call human wildlife conflict. And very few of them. The mothers have died from natural reasons like old age, natural diseases, and starvation back into the world. And all this has happened to the mothers when the babies are still very young at an age where they would not have survived without the mother's milk and also without protection against other dangers. And so we rescued them, handed them here in the nursery for approximately three years. And any time after the age of three, start to reintroduce all the elephants back into the world. The process of reintroducing them takes place within Sava Conservation Area. We've got three reintroduction centers. One is based within the northern part of Savo East with Umba Stockades. One is based within the southern part of Savo East, the Voy Stockades. And we've got one within the Kibwezi Forest, which is the Umani Spring Stockades. We've got our keepers that will monitor the orphans out in this field, trying to ensure that they get free into the park, into the forest, trying to learn by natural instinct on how to behave as elephants, trying to interact with wild herds of other elephants, until the time they will be invited in a herd of wild families who will later on train them, protect them, warn them against human beings. And when they join that wild herd, they will have become as wild as any other elephant out there. This process of reintroducing them takes quite a long time, a minimum of about five years before they start to get adapted in a herd of wild elephants. Once they all get adapted, we are happy we, are, we will be celebrating. We can say we've achieved our target because our main target is to rescue them, handwrite them, and set them free back into the world. The elephants have already joined us now. And uh, the first one to come in today was, uh, e or is, the second oldest in the nursery. An elephant by the name Nabulu, who is approximately three years old, who is the assistant matriarch in charge of the nursery who was rescued from the Maasai Mara when she was about below a year old, who was identified all alone and observed for some time, hoping for her to be reunited with the mother or the rest of the family members, something that never happened. And as you continue to wait for a longer period, the status of the elephant or the health starts to deteriorate every now and then. And so you have to wait for how l you have to wait for how long you have to wait before you go into rescue, and that's why his condition, her condition was not very good, and the decision was made to rescue her. Right now she's three years. Any time from now she's ready to go back into the world, and start the process of being uh, reintroduced. We do have an elephant uh, by the name uh, Maktau at the far end. And Maktau is approximately about uh, two and a half years old. Uh, Maktau was rescued uh, from Sava Conservation Area near a place called Maktau. He was found in a community all alone while at the age of about uh, three months old. And, and, and being found in a community obviously suspects that he might have been separated from his family by human beings. And that's why we rescued him. A uh, Maktau right now is approximately uh, three, o almost three years, two and a half, almost three years. And he's an elephant that will be set free anytime he attains the age of uh, three years.
far end, we've got the latest arrival in the nursery, an elephant by the name Olorian, who is almost one and a half years old, who was rescued uh, from the Masai Mara, who was also identified all alone, very thin and weak, a sign that she had been alone for some time and without the mother's milk. And that is why there was need for her to be rescued. Right now, uh, she's adjusting well in the nursery. She's improving well. We can tell the condition has really improved a lot for the short period she's been in the nursery, slightly over a two months now with us. But she's really improved a lot, and we are happy with her progress. Uh, we believe she'll be strong enough to go back into the world after some time. So this is just three elephants out of the 12 that will be joining us any time now. We've got two more coming in, uh, being led by Maisha, the main matriarch, the oldest, the mother figure. And Maisha is over three years. She's almost three and a half. She was rescued uh, from Sava Conservation Area. And the mother is believed to have actually died from starvation due to drought and that's why Maisha was left alone she was about eight months old by then and right now she's uh, over three years any time from now ready to go back into the world and start the process of being reintroduced being the oldest female automatically makes her become the leader or the main matriarch of the group and this is because it happens naturally by instinct out in the world we do have Kiombo next to my right who is uh, about three years old. And Kyombo was rescued from the Masai Mara. Kyombo was identified uh, all alone at a, an age of below a year old, a sign that uh, he was an orphan. And I say a sign that he was an orphan because a young elephant will need the mother's milk for a minimum of about two years. If they happen to lose the mothers when they are below two, then they will not survive because they still need the mother's milk, despite the fact that they're getting some vegetation as well. So that is why Kyombo had to be rescued, because below a year old, all alone, without the mother, he could also have been killed by the hyenas and the lions out there. That's why there was need for him to be rescued. We do have Ziwadi, who is taking her bottle now, who is uh, about two years old, who was rescued from the Masai Mara, who was also uh, believed to have been uh, uh, abandoned or left behind by the rest of the family members for reasons we could not tell by then. But after some time in the nursery, we discovered that she's epileptic. And uh, we are happy to note or tell that she's improving well. She's an elephant that we expect to go back into the world. And she's a victim of going to Umani Springs when the right time comes. That is, after three years, we expect her to be back to normal. We do have Naleku, who is uh, a slightly over a year old, actually attained one year uh, last month. And Naleku was rescued from the Masai Mara. Naleku's mother is believed to have died from a natural disease. She was left alone at the age of about six months in the company of an auntie who had her own baby that was breastfeeding. And that's why this auntie could not help Naleku in terms of providing milk. <coughs> and that is the reason to why a decision had to be made for her to be rescued. Despite the fact that she was with a bigger female elephant that would provide protection, but she would starve in the long run to death. And that's why elephants will always walk or go in herds and families. And if a mother dies while with the rest of the family members, and this mother had a baby, rest of the family members will protect the young one because female elephants have got very strong maternal instincts. They always want to protect everyone in the family. And that is why in a circular case, the young one will be provided with protection, but without milk. If that elephant was below two, that elephant will not survive, and that's one uh, that's why one has to be rescued. Uh, right now, he she's approximately uh, slightly over a year old. We do have Mukoka at the far end holding a branch in the mouth. And Mukoka is a very lucky elephant. 
having been identified from northern part of Savo East National Park, having been identified by aerial surveillance team who are on patrol, and one of the team members saw some footprints on the ground of a young elephant all alone. And because we know that they go in herds or in groups, it was abnormal for these footprints of one young elephant all alone. And that's why they patrolled and monitored and followed the footprints up to the river, trying to search or find out why this baby was all alone and where the baby went. But they did not succeed the same day. They did that and, 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 and our teams on the ground helped or came in to help for about three days and, and until the baby was identified all alone along the river. And that's why he had to be rescued. At that young age of about seven months, he was just very lucky to be found still alive. And that's why I'm saying he's a very lucky elephant to have been identified all alone. He's approximately two years old. He was seven months when he came in. We do have Rojo at the age of the mud bath. And Rojo is about one and a half years old. Though small in size compared to his age. And really the size of an elephant uh, does not tell their age. And that's why Rojo looks almost the same size uh, with Naleku. But there is a difference of about uh, six months between the two. Rojo was rescued uh, from Savo West National Park. And the mother is believed to have been killed by poachers. And that's why he was left alone. Believed to have seen exactly what happened to the mother. And so caused him a lot of trauma and stress. When they all come in the nursery, because they've lost the mothers, they're always traumatized, they're always stressed, they're always mourning for having lost the families. But in Rojo's case, it was beyond. And that's why we, wa we believe, uh, because he saw what happened to the mother, it was a big challenge for him. And that's why he was stressed for that very long period. But we are happy to know that he's doing all right at the moment. He started to learn to be independent at some point. Taking her milk now is an elephant by the name Kiasa, who is about uh, three years old, who was rescued uh, from Savo Conservation Area, whose mother is believed to have died from starvation uh, due to drought. And that's why a decision was made uh, for Kiasa to be rescued. Due to climate change, uh, sometimes we stay for a longer period without rain, a longer period of drought and without water, uh, then there's no food for the animals and even human beings as well. And that's why you'll find many of the animals have died out there in the world because there's no water, there's no food. And in most cases, the mothers will die fast because the babies will keep on suckling every little that the mother has until the mother has nothing completely. And so in such like cases, the babies are found alone. And if the babies will stay for a day or two or three days all alone, they also die. So that is how Kiasa uh, came in the nursery because the mother is believed to have died from starvation due to drought. We do have Naboishu right here. And Naboishu is about uh, uh, one and a half, almost two years old. Naboishu was uh, rescued uh, from the Masai Mara. And Naboishu's mother is also believed to have died from a natural disease. He was found in the company of the old family, but the old family would not give milk to him. And so there was need for him to be rescued because without milk, he could not have survived. And that's why a decision had to be made for him to be rescued. Right now, Naboishu is uh, almost two years old and uh, so far doing all right in the nursery. We do have Lara walking away at the far end and Lara is about two years old. Lara was rescued from the Masai Mara or Lara Conservancy, identified alone, suspected to have been separated from her family, the human being, and so she's a victim of human wildlife conflict. As we mentioned earlier, reasons that have caused them to be left orphans, a human wildlife conflict is on increase in our country at the moment, and it is on increase because of the increase in the population of man or human beings compared to the space or size of land, causing human beings to occupy areas that belong to wild animals, migratory routes of wild animals being occupied by people. People are doing lots of farming 
a lot of developments and that is why if these animals want to migrate from one area to another they will find it very difficult the land plunder the crops the structures sometimes people are doing farming next to the reserves next to the national park making the animals to get attracted by the crops and so breaking the fence to go and feed on the crops which should not be happening so that is what is causing human wildlife conflict and that's why you might have realized majority of the offers we've got here it is either starvation or human wildlife conflict though we've got one suspected case of ivory poaching like uh, rojo uh, but we are happy to note that the trend of poaching in our country uh, within this season is really gone down and we are happy we are praying that it goes down completely until there will be no poaching at all so that these animals can have a better natural life and stay until they can die from a natural death just like you and me would expect to happen so all the 20 elephants uh, i mean all the 12 elephants are here with us now and uh, are ranging from one year the youngest to three and a half years the oldest they spend the day out in the park all the bushes you can see in the background is part of Nairobi National Park. And the elephants will go out every day in the morning at 6. And they go out in the park so that they can learn by natural instinct on how to behave as elephants. Most behaviors in elephants are instinct, but they just need direction. And once they're set free in the park, they know what to do. They start to learn to feed on different types of vegetation. The young ones will learn from the bigger ones, what the big ones are feeding, taking their trunk into a bigger elephant's mouth or trying to smell on what the bigger elephant is feeding on. At some point, the keepers are there to cut the branches and feed to the baby elephants who don't know how to use their trunk. The trunk is the hand as well as the nose, and so it is very sensitive on an elephant body. It has about 40,000 different types of muscles. And so the elephants will start to perfect the use of the trunk after the age of about eight months. And so if you have a young one that is below eight months, then they can't uh, use the trunk properly to suck water. You have to give them water in a bottle. They cannot grab the greens strong enough and, and put the vegetation in the mouth. We have to cut the greens and put in the mouth for them so that they can start to learn to chew and know what they need to feed on. So that is why they need to have the keepers all day out from 6 in the morning up to 5 in the evening when they come back for bed. We're feeding them on intervals of 3 hours and uh, this is elephants that are 2 years and above. Those that are below 2 years, we are feeding them on demand. When a newborn is born out in the world, uh, they want to suckle the mothers on intervals of 10 minutes. The duration will grow longer as they grow old. And that is why when they come in the nursery, when they push you around, we know that they want some milk. When they're crying and making a lot of noise, we know that they, are, they want some milk and we have the milk ready to provide to them. But after the age of about a year, we know that we have to improve and give feed them on every three hours or so. When they go to Savo, we introduce them to six hourly, 12 hourly until the milk is stopped completely. Because when they're in Savo, we want them to feed on less milk but more vegetation so that they can eventually become wild knowing what they need to feed on. So that is one of the reasons why they need a 24-hour care. At night, the keepers need to give the milk and that is why somebody has to spend the night in the room for the purposes of feeding them, for the purposes of keeping them company because the social animals, they have lost their families we are taking the role of the family members and that's why we have to be there for them. When they're still very young, just a few days old, a few months old, because sometimes we get such like babies, we have to keep them warm by ensuring that we cover them with the blankets. And that's why you might have seen some of them having the blankets covering them to ensure that they're kept warm. And at night in the rooms, they have a keeper to cover them with the blanket when they lie down to sleep. This is because pneumonia is a threat to young elephants. And you cannot tell in advance when an elephant has got pneumonia because they cannot talk. The lungs of an elephant are attached to the ribcage. That's why 
will only realize when it's too late by seeing some water dropping from the trunk. That is uh, Roho lying down and uh, Maisha directly behind together with, uh, uh, with Laro. So those are the reasons why the elephants need a 24-hour care all day out in the park with the keepers and all night in the rooms as well. Enjoying the dust bath, which is very, f uh, which is very important for them, and uh, despite it being fun, uh, part of it stuck on the body really protects them from being bitten by some insects. And when it is too hot, from direct sun fan as well. Laro joining Aroho, lying down as well, and Maisha right in the middle observing the two. If you're joining us now, welcome. We are at the Sheldrake's Wildlife Trust, Nairobi Nursery. Twelve baby elephants before us now, all orphans, so that's why they're here. Often from different parts of the country with different reasons. We take care of them in the nursery for the first three years before we start to reintroduce them back into the world within Sava Conservation Area. We've got reintroduction centers with our keepers who will set them free out in the park every day, bring them back at our base every evening, and when they make friends with the wild herds, they stop to come back, and we let them free and let them become wild. They decide by themselves when they're ready to go, which wild herd to join, whom to accompany with. Our role as keepers is just to observe and see the reaction, and when they decide not to come back at our base, then we can celebrate we can say we've achieved our target. We can be very happy to see them uh, go back into the world. Laro lying down on the ground. Next to is uh, Rojo. And uh, we've got uh, Maisha also standing close. Behind Maisha is Kiasa. The bigger one on Kiasa's right is Maktau. The one, the small one in the middle between Maktau and Kiasa is Olorian. Just to mention the name so that you can identify your adopted babies if you are joining us now. So the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust does not only take care of orphan baby elephants and rhinos. We do have other projects like mobile veterinary units, anti-poaching teams, community projects, aerial surveillance. And all this is working together with the Kenya Wildlife Service to ensure that all animals are safe in the park. For example, anti-poaching teams will patrol the parks with the help of the Kenya Wildlife Service rangers to ensure that the no snares in the park, the no poachers in the park, uh, the, parks is the parks are safe for all wild animals. If there is any injured animal from anywhere within the parks, we are conducted. Our mobile veterinary unit will go to the ground, help treat the injured animals. If the injured animal is at an area that cannot be accessed by road, we've got a sky vet that will fly to the scene, treat the injured animal or animals, and set them free to continue with their own natural life after treatment. Our community project will go around the communities that are neighboring the park and the reserve, giving them education on how to coexist and stay peacefully neighboring one another with these wild animals. The same community project will go around the schools that are neighboring the parks and the reserves, educating the children on the importance of taking care of these wild animals and how they should be taken care of so that when the children are fully grown, they know what to do, how to behave, and how to protect them. And by so doing, we'll be ensuring that the population of all animals in general is protected and is maintained or improved. Being a chilly morning today, there's not a lot of activity, no rolling in the mud a lot, not dusting a lot apart from 
Rojo and Maisha who been doing it. Rojo still on the ground. All the security uh, surrounding him. Kiasa on the right. Maisha directly behind. And behind Kiasa we've got Nabulu as well. Just to ensure that he's okay on the ground as he enjoys himself. So you might be interested in supporting the work that is being done by the Sheldrake's Wilder Trust. Yes, you are welcomed. You only need to go on our website and find out how you can do it or how you can donate. You can do it in form of adopting an elephant, which is costing a minimum fee of 50 US dollars a year. And you can adopt an elephant for yourself or as a gift to a friend. And if you do it as a gift, it is a gift receipt and they will receive the updates every month. But if you do it for yourself, it's you that will receive the updates every month. When you adopt an elephant, we open an account for you. We'll be updating your account every month, letting you know all that is happening within the nursery. You'll also get a keeper's diary, which is written every day by different keepers, telling different stories from different orphans. And all that it will be brought to you on a monthly basis online. You also get a watercolor painting, which is done by Angela Sheldrick. All that will be brought to your account on a monthly basis as well. So you can help support by adopting an elephant for yourself or for a friend. You can also adopt by buying a bottle of milk for these elephants. You can also support by actually donating towards the other projects that are being done by the Sheldrake's Wilder Trust, like the mobile veterinary unit, the anti-poaching teams, the community project, because all that is going towards ensuring that all animals are protected and are safe uh, within the parks. It is important for all of us to know that uh, these animals have the right to life and so it is our role as human beings to care and protect for them. And that is why we have to ensure that uh, we let them stay in nat a natural environment. We have to ensure that their habitat is protected. People are not cutting trees anyhow because even the birds need to make their nest from those trees. And, and the other animals like the giraffes need the leaves from the top of the trees. So to protect all animals, we need to keep our environment natural. So as you can see, the elephants are about to walk away into the park and spend the rest of the day until at five in the evening when they come back for bed. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us for this uh, uh, 11 a.m. milk feed. Twelve baby elephants walking away now. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for supporting us. Uh, we shall continue to take care of the baby elephants and uh, remember to keep safe.